everyone, it's me Curtis and in today's video I'm going to be compiling a very short handful of a list of common hamster behaviors to give you guys that you can look out for if you are a hamster owner. Said, this is only a handful this is not every single uh, hamster behavior but if you guys do enjoy this video I may make another video with another handful of common hamster behaviors so just getting right into it the first uh, action or behavior is called pouching now oftentimes people have seen their hamster do this or whatever but this is the action when hamsters pouch their food so unlike a lot of other rodents that are commonly kept as pets hamsters actually have what are known as cheek pouches which actually extend down to about halfway to three quarters of the way down their body depending on the species. That is to say that they can hold a lot of food in there and they usually stuff their cheeks when they find a treat or they get a fresh bowl of food. They will pouch their cheeks uh, really really big and take this back to their nest where they will unleash it That's where they can eat it at their own leisure and they know they're safe. The next action is called burrowing and just like it sounds this is when hamsters will burrow under their bedding so a majority of hamster owners um that no so some hamster owners do not provide their hamsters with around four to eight um, inches of bedding depending on what species you have but that is recommended because hamsters create dens or little nests underground where they like make little underground navigation system from one place to the other. So I actually witnessed this in Jasper's um, German style cage. He had like a little tunnel or something, but it's just very enriching for them and very natural. That's why they say to provide uh, good burrowing substrates that allow hamsters to build tunnels and things because it is something that they will naturally do. Now this next uh, behavior may be like what, but this is chewing. Now I decided to add this on here because this is something that varies from hamster to hamster. Um, a lot of times I get questions asking me why is my hamster chewing so much and you know a lot of questions related along that line. So this is obviously a natural thing for hamsters to do. They need to chew their food and things like that. However, because hamsters are rodents, their teeth never stop growing without their lifetime. So from the time that they are born to the time that they pass away, their teeth are constantly growing. Therefore, they need something to constantly gnaw on in order to keep their teeth trim. This is why it is very crucial and vital that their owners provide them with enough chew toys and things for them to chew on. Uh, diet has been part of this. Lab bots are recommended to help file down teeth, but it is recommended to make sure your hamster has a lot of things to chew on to ensure that their teeth do not become overgrown because that can become painful and very detrimental to the health of your hamster. If your hamster is chewing a lot and you have chews, chances are that it is in too small of a space. So as of now, the current living standard for hamsters is 450 square inches. So to measure that, you just measure the length and width of the floor space of your cage. And that number needs to be at least 450. Shelves and ramps and things do not count as floor space, by the way. The fourth behavior is called scent marking or odor marking, some people say. Now this is done predominantly by male hamsters and this is where they rub their hips, the sides of their hips, on items in order to mark them as their own. So as you know, Syrian hamsters are solitary as it is, but male hamsters are kind of even more quote unquote aggressive or more solitary. So they really, really love to mark everything that they own or claim as theirs. So that is what they use those little gray patches, grayish brown colored patches on the side of their body for. Um, fun fact, actually Syrians, scent marks or scent glands actually are on the side of their bodies and they have two of them. Whereas dwarf hamsters only have one that is located right under where their belly button would be on their stomach. So as the last uh, behavior was predominantly done by males, this one is actually done only by females. And that, and the fifth behavior and the fifth behavior, what? And the fifth, I give up. And the fifth behavior expressed by hamsters is called. Are you serious? And the fifth behavior expressed by hamsters is called going into heat or heat. This is done by female hamsters about every four days, and this is the only time that hamsters are female hamsters are willing to breathe. 
So like I said, this uh, action signifies that the female hamster is ready to breed. This is actually the only time that female hamsters are responsive to breeding. So although people just think you can put a hamster together for like a minute, they will they may not breed just because they are rodents in a second and have a bajillion babies, as the female is only responsive to breeding every four days. Also during this time, female hamsters will smell extra bad. Um, which is why they say female hamsters have a stronger odor because they do. When they go into heat every four days, they release this fume that is very unpleasant to our noses. Alright, and so the last behavior expressed by hamsters, which is my sixth one, is squeaking and hissing. So if you did not know that hamsters can squeak or hiss, that may be a good thing, but they actually can, and this is more than often a sign of extreme discomfort. So if your hamster is squeaking or squealing or hissing, it is you should really leave your hamster alone, give it time because hamsters can draw blood like and puncture through the skin, skin, <laughs> and it will hurt. So if your hamster is squealing or hissing, it may be in pain and if you can kind of tell that it's in pain, I would highly recommend bringing it to a vet. But if it's just being territorial and kind of hissing in its one corner, that also may be cage aggression and it may be an extra territorial hamster for the simple fact that their enclosure space is too small. So like I mentioned earlier, make sure that your cage is at least 450 square inches. Alright guys, that is it for today's kind of fun fact uh, behavior video. I hope you guys maybe learned a thing or two or just found this video informative or entertaining. Um, I'm sure I added like video clips or anything like b-roll footage over so you guys can kind of see some of the physical behaviors being displayed on screen. But don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you guys would like to see more future content just like today's and you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram which are just at Curtis the same just like my channel name. I also run my own pet supplies business run through Etsy which is called Curtis the same pet supplies so if you would like to so if you would like to shop for some unique pet supplies you can check out the link in the description of my video as it is in all of them. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video if you have any video suggestions feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. But until next time, I hope to see you all in the next video.